Hello, I am Nicole from the Singapore Art Museum and I'm pleased to welcome you to the third session of the Cross-Cultural Art Do series. Today's session is titled Embodiment. This program is part of Sam's exhibition, The Gift, which is currently showing at the National Gallery, Singapore. Today's program is brought to you by the Art Gallery of New South Wales, Australia, the Black Dog Institute, Australia, and the Singapore Art Museum. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce to you our three speakers. We have Danielle Galotta from the Art Gallery of New South Wales, Professor Catherine Bordell from the Black Dog Institute, and Dr. Lim Chai Hong from the Singapore Art Museum. They will be leading us on this online art and wellness experience. Without further ado, I shall now hand the time over to our speakers. Chai Hong, please. Thank you for taking the time to join us on this journey. This series is crafted for audiences near and far, both local and global. While COVID presented challenges, it also presented the opportunity for us to e-meet you on the digital platform, which might not be viable once upon a time. We are very much delighted to transcend geographical and physical boundaries to celebrate cultural diversities. And we hope that you would enjoy what we have prepared for you today. Before we start the program, we would like to explain to audiences in Singapore about the acknowledgement of country that is being practiced in Australia. In Australia, an acknowledgement of country is an opportunity for one to show respect for the traditional owners and the continual connection of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders to country. Country in this context is more than just ownership or connection to land. Amongst other things, it relates to values, places, resources, stories, and cultural obligations associated with that area and its future. Without further ado, may I invite my co-presenter, Dana Galotta from the Art Gallery in South Wales to present an acknowledgement of country on our behalf and thereafter to start part three of the cross culture art Doe series and on the theme of embodiment. Danielle, please. Welcome all today. I begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians on the land on which the Art Gallery of New South Wales is located and the collection is held. And from where Catherine and myself connect today, I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend a warm welcome to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples connecting today. In this cross-cultural art dose experience, we create an opportunity to take time out, to be present, to focus on a selection of artworks, to allow us to be curious, imagine, and connect with our own thoughts and feelings while sharing with others. We invite you all to suspend judgment and allow yourself time and space to observe and process the artworks presented today through slow looking techniques and personal reflection. I invite Catherine to share a few words on our collaboration. Thank you, Danielle, and hello, everyone. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome and thank you for joining our third session of Cross Culture Art Dose. I'm Catherine Boydell. I'm a professor of mental health at the Black Dog uh, Institute in Sydney. It's a medical research institute, and my program of research focuses on using the arts in the research process to create and produce research data and to communicate and share research findings using visual, performative, and literary genres. Cross-Culture Dose is based on the Arts on Prescription program, a collaboration between Danielle and the Art Gallery of New South Wales and myself and Black Dog Institute. Our research exploring the impact of the Arts on Prescription program showed significant increases in mental health and well-being and in a sense of community inclusion and connectedness. Based on these positive findings, we decided to extend the arts engagement to the broader public and in collaboration with our Singapore colleagues. I'd also like to acknowledge that October is Mental Health Month and re-emphasize the importance of the arts and its impact on not only mental health and well-being, but also on our physical health as well. 
And there's a great um, wealth of research evidence that shows that the arts can reduce anxiety and depression, can enhance feelings of belongingness and connectedness, and can promote empathy. I'll be moderating the discussion this afternoon. Um, as Nicole mentioned, you're invited to share your responses in the Q&A box, and I'll try my best to get to all of them. But if I don't, please don't be offended. All of your comments are important to us, and we will have a record of them. We also suggest that you might want to have a pencil, pen, or other drawing materials present during the session in case you'd like to draw a doodle and engage in any other creative activity during the session. To prepare for this session on embodiment, we'll engage with our bodies and I'll guide you through a very brief meditative exercise. If you can begin by bringing your attention into your body, you can close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. I'd like you to take notice of your body seated wherever you're seated, feeling the weight of your body on the chair or on the floor. I invite you to take a few deep breaths. And as you take a deep breath, bring in more oxygen, enlivening the body. And as you exhale, have a sense of relaxing more deeply. You can notice your feet on the floor. Notice the sensations of your feet touching the floor the weight and pressure, vibration, heat. You can take notice of your legs against the chair, pressure, pulsing, heaviness, lightness. Notice your back against the chair. Bring your attention into your stomach area. If your stomach is tense or tight, let it soften. Take a breath. Notice your hands. Are your hands tense or tight? See if you can allow them to soften. Notice your arms. Feel any sensation in your arms. Let your shoulders be soft. Notice your neck and throat. Let them be soft. Relax. Soften your jaw. Let your entire face and facial muscle muscles be soft. Then notice your entire body present. Take another breath. Be aware of your entire body as best you can. I invite you to take another breath. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you for that. The theme of this session, as we mentioned, is embodiment. And the theme of embodiment has reemerged as a dominant motif within contemporary art. Not only have questions of embodiment been framed in and through the materiality of things and artifacts, but also bodies have become objects of representation. Questions of embodiment have emerged under such themes as performance, identity, spectatorship, subjectivity, gender, and materiality of media, among others. Artists have frequently invoked a return to the body in a double sense that of embodied perceivers and that of embodied things, as in artworks. Merleau-Ponty postulated that bodily engagement with the world is quite basic. This is not about privileging the physical over the mental, but as a description of what it is like to move through the world, mind and body working as one. Danielle. Thank you, Catherine. The selection of artworks we have chosen for this session invite us to observe closely, to reflect on our senses and become aware of how, how, how our mind and body respond to the visual elements, materials and concepts embodied in the three art forms today. We'll transition to who's worked for today. And I'd like to invite you to take a few moments to take in the whole work. Perhaps as you do this, also take in a breath. Take it in. And as you survey the work, allow that breath out. As you cast your eye across this artwork, 
What strikes you first? Is it the bold colour? The dynamic, bold use of primary colours, red, blue and yellow, that are evenly balanced through this composition. The loose strokes of paint create an energy in the work. We have Maybe. a comment, Danielle. Sorry, the work feels like my body. Chaotic, red pain, yellow inflammation, blue piece outside the body. Maybe water that helps pain relief. It's a beautiful comment. Connecting the body to the earth, to the ground, to the air, as well, and, and to water. Yes, you might be struck by these three figures. You may notice the various and expressive marks. These marks that are testimony to the individuality of the artist's hand. They look like they're having fun and turning cartwheels. And another comment is playful. I feel like I'm at the circus, so much movement. Thank you for sharing those comments. Definitely, there is a sense of bodily movement, of joy, of creativity, and the vitality of expressing non-verbally, non-verbal communication of stretching your arms out and feeling alive outdoors. So at this point, I want you to feel present in your body. If you feel like stretching your arms out, wriggling your shoulders, moving your neck, and feeling that enlivenedness in this piece. I have another lovely comment. I feel the movement of the diagonal line. My paralyzed arm tries to follow it. Mm. Exactly, you can see that those you know, radiating arms out in sort of that golden yellow, they suggest perhaps a costume or they suggest that flow of energy through the movement of the body. They're another really com comments. Another comment, bodily autonomy, something one can lack and long for. Yes, I think in this work, you know, we get that sense of, that sense of freedom that the artist is communicating here. And whether this is the artist documenting an experience that he or she have witnessed, is it a memory? Or is it the artist enlivening the artwork with those personal movements that the artist is imagining? These are all possibilities of when we are confronted with a joyous work like this. I have a couple of other comments. Um, I feel like the energy is in the red and the figures are wanting to say something about their feelings. And we have someone who's quite curious about that one little green splash tethered to one of the bodies. Yes, excellent observation. And again, in this focus looking, we do notice these details that if we had just spent a few moments, we wouldn't have noticed that. So that green touch, Perhaps it's that indication of the artist dipping their paintbrush from the blue watercolour into the yellow watercolour and then dabbing it and having that transition into a secondary colour there. So it's that, that practice that the artist has revealed a little bit of that sort of colour wheel experimentation. I'd like to draw our attention to the marks that we see, the looseness, the sort of broad strokes that you can imagine the artist perhaps having many, many years of experience and having that inner confidence to take in some of those marks a pen 
or a pencil and not labour over the work, to look, process and put a mark down that is really free and energetic. You see some of those marks the artist has squiggled and rolled the pencil into a circular form and then come back and punctuated with the nose or eyes. And I wonder how, how people who are sharing today, how you find drawing and documenting the human body. Do you find it a challenge? Do you find it liberating, the fact that if the body keeps moving, as in this drawing, we're not tied to one line? As we can see in these figures, the artist has repeated lines. As there's movement, the artist has wanted to document that. We have a comment um, from someone in the audience who finds it confronting. Um, and says there's a lot of rejection of challenging bodies. And we have another comment. It looks like they're chasing some birds away and I can feel the haste in their hands. And Nicole has kind of postulated that maybe the green spot is a fish and they are at the seaside fishing. And wonderful imaginative and very creative comments. When I look at this work and I see the body stretching up and out, at an angle, what comes to me is the practice of connecting the body and mind. And in particular in practices such as yoga and Tai Chi, there's these connections between mind and body that we can take with us um, as we move through the world. And just as in, in yoga and in physical performance, there's that that importance on, on, on breathing, on monitoring your breath. So it might be a good moment for us to actually reflect back on how we're seated and how we're feeling in this moment. We have someone responding with loose motion of my pencil, its release of energy. Mm -hmm. And we have another comment about the drawing response to your question, um, Danielle, about drawing the body. Um, I find drawing diverse bodies an essential activism, filling our social timelines with bodies we hardly ever see in capitalist media, people of color, fat bodies, disabled bodies, indigenous people. Definitely. And I love in this, in this drawing that we can embody any of these figures. They're, they're a silhouette in a way that we can embody ourselves in them in that expression. They're really very beautiful and very strong responses to these work. I hope this work gives a sense of focus and balance to us. I love as well that this work has that childlike naivety that for some adults is really hard to get back as we go through our lives. The fact that a mark can be loose, it can be nondescript, it can tap into something much broader conceptually than just what we see. Interestingly, this idea of this childlike quality is something that in the tradition of literati painting is what they look for. The more childlike, the, the more priced the work would be, rather than something that is very constructed. Yes. I think we'll reveal the artist and the medium. The title of this work is called Acrobat. It is by the Australian artist, Joe Falonga. This work is about 16 by 45 centimeter. 
And this is a tad smaller than the standard size of a placemat, which is about 30 by 45 cm. The longer use pencil, pen, black ink, and watercolor to create these decisive rhythmic lines. One can almost feel the extension of his body by his hands onto the paper, animating the performance of the acrobat. This work on paper underscores sheer physicality of agility and balance of both the subject and the artist. What Falonga has done is that he used this technique of drawing in which images are depicted on a surface, essentially with lines. It can also contain tonal areas, washes and other non-linear marks that we can see from Falonga's work. And ink, pencil, crayon, charcoal are some of the most commonly used materials uh, for drawing. But drawing can also be made with or in combination with paint and other wet or dry media. Thank you, Chai. Our journey is going to take a very different direction now with our next work. Before you begin, Danielle, I just can't remind um, audience members to use the Q&A because I think a, a couple of audience members were raising their hands. So just to use the Q&A function. Thanks so much. Again, we're taking a very different direction now. I'm going to invite you to share with us what are some of your first impressions of this image. We see here a photograph that documents this open-ended and conceptual piece in the Singapore Art Museum. I'm imagining that what you're struck by first is the individual pressing herself against the wall. You'll notice the shadow that her body casts on the wall. In response to your first question, Danielle, we've got some submissions in terms of what this um, individual might be feeling, uh, fear, angst. Um, we have a comment, she's a prisoner. Delicate conversation, quiet and intimate. They're really interesting comments. They're almost polar opposites. Thank you for sharing those. It is very curious what she's doing. And it's almost as if she's breaking many of the conventions that we're familiar with as museum visitors. Often in museums, we're invited to have an experience that is about observing and looking. And we're encouraged not to touch in particular, not to touch the walls, not to leave our mark. This is a very interesting piece that deals with the human body as being part of the artwork. We have a really interesting comment, Danielle. Women using our bodies as artworks is an act of defiance. We are forced to bear so much within and about and to our bodies from birth, taking control, taking back the airwaves, taking back our bodies to tell you what we will do with it. 
And then we have a, oh, sorry, Danielle. Do you want to respond to that comment before I read some of the others? I just um, think that um, for artists, the use of the human body, movement and gestures, whether male or female, yes, I acknowledge that they have been used as activism and breaking the conventions of systems. And as we unpack this work, we'll see some of that come through. Someone's asked, is this the beautiful score of Bruce Melman? It appears an act of intimacy. And we have another comment. I feel she's trying to understand what the art is about. Definitely. Some very poignant comments there and some very astute observers. So yes, we're looking at a work that's installed and you'll see to the right of the figure, there is a poster and upon that poster is a list of instructions. And those instructions have been shared by the artist. And the artist here is inviting the audience to come into the space, to read, to process that information. And you might even see that information as instruction. When we read those instructions, each individual will interpret those and perform those or action those depending on how we consume that information and how we move our own bodies in space. I also want to draw your attention to the palette, the wooden palette to the left of the figure. And you'll notice some large posters, which are reproductions of the inscriptions on the wall. Audience in this space are also invited to take a poster with them. And I want you to think about yourself being involved in this performative piece. What would it feel like to walk into this space that is spot lit? Would you have been confused? Would you have been challenged? Is this a work that you would have been drawn to? When we look at this image, just for a moment, I want you to imagine that you're this figure. You've come close to the wall. What does it feel like? I would feel self-conscious, but also perhaps that is the intention of the artist to be more self-aware. Definitely. The artist is bringing our mind and body connection, that awareness of being in this, in this space. We also Create. have a comment, um, sorry, Danielle, right. um, from someone who has empathy for the girl. And again, I think that that creation of that sense of empathy, what that might feel like um, from the perspective of an outsider. A vulnerability, those who have been misused so often need to have their back to a wall to be hypervigilant to dangers. Mm. And we have a comment, it reminds one of our participants of Yoko Ono's work. Yes. The idea of coming into a, a museum or a gallery with a framework of space and traditions and a range of artists who set up, in a way, a challenge. These works, or this work in particular, plays with ideas, 
invites the audience to be the protagonist, to be the performer. And the way we process that is highly individual. And in the way, in a way, the artwork is activated in our minds. So we're playing with the artist's conceptual practice, but also the conceptual activity that happens in our own mind and experience in our body here. I was thinking perhaps we should look at the instruction text to get a further sense of uh, what we feel about it. In this moment, what I encourage you to do is to listen to the instructions and to process how you would interpret them. So just take a moment to read those out and then perhaps after we've done that, you'd like to share how you, you have interpreted this, whether you would do a similar movement to the image we saw. So the title of the work is Body Pressure. Press as much of the front surface of your body, palms in or out, left or right cheek against the wall as possible. Press very hard and concentrate. Form an image of yourself. Suppose you have just stepped, in, stepped forward on the opposite side of the wall, pressing back against the wall very hard. Press very hard and concentrate on the image pressing very hard the image of pressing very hard. Press your front surface and back surface towards each other and begin to ignore or block the thickness of the wall. Remove the wall. Think how various parts of your body press against the wall. Which parts touch and which do not. Consider the part of your back which press against the wall, press hard and feel how the front and back of your body press together. Concentrate on tension in the muscles. Pain where bones meet, fleshy deformations that are caught under pressure Consider body hair, perspiration, odours, smells. And right at the bottom, this may be very, this may be a very erotic exercise. Yeah, very reading good. Danielle sounds like a meditative practice in it, in and of itself. Just as you read through that script, um, I felt myself as as if you were guiding in a in a meditative practice, which is quite interesting. Mm. It's a very open. It's very open ended, isn't it? I, I was thinking about the voice that would uh, read the instruction could really trigger a different sort of, uh, like if the voice is a little bit, if it's read by someone else with a different tone, it could have a very different um, result. Exactly. So everyone who enters into this installation and would read these instructions may put an emphasis on different words, may put an emphasis on different um, clauses, which would enact a different performance or different reading. We have some comments coming in. Um, someone, I like the intimate details of awareness, even body hair. Um, another uh, comment, this is a regime used for sensory regulation. 
And another comment, I feel the girl is trying to understand the set of instructions on the paper. She's trying, but has her body pushing against the solid standing wall, which will not give way. This task of understanding is very difficult. Back is in front of us, showing her vulnerability. Again, this notion of vulnerability. Yes. And I think this work does have that element. I totally acknowledge that element of vulnerability. And I can just imagine that in this gallery space, when this work is installed, you could have multiple people enacting this piece. So in a way you're performing it, you're embodying these instructions, you're performing it for yourself. And you're also in a way performing it for others to observe as well. So yes, there is that vulnerability that give and that yield in this particular piece. We might reveal the artists and I think someone earlier alluded to that in the Q and A. This is a work by Bruce Nolan titled Un Body Pressure. For Nolan, the work is rich with the sorry, for Nolan, the body is rich with possibility, particularly to explore. Body pressure features a set of instructions that invite the audience to introduce their body to the unveiling surface, that of a wall. In this context, it is the audience rather than Norman himself who is the performer. As one tries to push against the wall and as the other side of the wall pushes back, one becomes more mindful of one's body, the muscular tension and the sensation, including the smell. In the process, the work trans transition from a physical to a mental exercise. And this work combines Norman's conceptual and performative approach. In this context of Norman's work, we may take this to be what we call performance art. Performance art may be understood as artworks that are created through actions performed by the artist, or in this case, the participant. This action may be live or recorded, spontaneous or scripted. Performance art is often regarded as a non-traditional way of making art and offer alternative to the static permanence of painting and sculpture. The terms have since been used to describe film, video, photography and installation work to reach the actions of the artists, performers, or the audience are conveyed. And most recently, it is considered to be a set of questions and concern about how art relates to people and the wider context of the social world. Thank you, Chai. We might move to our third work. And again, we've taken you on, again, a very different journey today. This is our third work. And as we allow you time to take in this pair of three-dimensional works, I invite you to be aware of your body And coincidentally, just as in the acrobat work we looked at and the Bruce Nauman piece, I'd like you to notice how these works almost have sort of reaching out appendages. They're almost like arms that reach out. So you might want to take a stretch at this moment and imagine these artworks coming alive, perhaps moving. Imagine what sounds they would make.
We have some comments. Movement, kinetic art structure, remind me of a clock ticking away time. And another comment, they remind me of headdresses. I want to wear them, they are gorgeous. Definitely, I, I do agree when I first saw these, those circular mechanical forms in the center did seem like the central heart that everything was mechanizing around. So yes, I can see that reference to a clock and also to that idea of celebration and those traditions and those crafts of, of weaving and creating ornamental structures. So yes, very poignant comments here. We have a couple of others as well. Um, wow, this evokes a repetition like a Rebecca Horn performance. And another, I've been transported into a studio um, Ghibli movie, such as Spirited Away. Oh, they, they have really fantastic um, associations to these works. So again, we're, we're finding our memories and our associations that we're bringing to this reading. I'm delighted that people are sharing these. I really like the comment of the repetition. In, these, in this pair, we have a work on the left and we have a work on the right. And I think maybe when we first confront these works, they do seem very similar and they are. But once we delve in closer, we see that they're both unique and different. There's that symmetry that exists within each work and that repetition that someone just shared. And that repetition radiates that form out. Someone's also noted the everyday objects that make, make these works up as well. Uh, chains, rakes, beads, brooms, wheel hubs, colanders. Exactly. These are works that are, are an assemblage, an assemblage of mass produced consumer items that you might find in a hardware store or those $2 shops that sell practically everything from kitchen utensils to craft materials to those odds and ends that you need at one o'clock in the morning that you <laughs> need to run out first thing in the morning. They're the materials of the everyday that we're very familiar with. But the artist here has taken the everyday, handled, touched, repurposed, assembled to create meaning and to repurpose. We know that artists through the ages have always used materials accessible to them. So contemporary artists delve into the found object, the ready-made and the mass-produced. They're quite beautiful pieces. I hope you'll notice if we go in a little bit closer, you'll notice the elongated and dangling threads. Cast your eye on those repeated shapes and you'll see within the plastic, within those radiating forms, in the interwining of weaving. Perhaps not weaving of cotton, but weaving of synthetic threads that have been handmade. So there's this paradox or juxtaposition 
of mass produced synthetic materials, but they've been lovingly handmade and woven and transformed. You'll see these dangling threads with beads and circular forms that the artist has constructed. I can imagine walking past this and perhaps that slight movement in the space or the air might create a little bit of movement. There's a comment here, Danielle, about acknowledging that movement. Um, there's so much movement and the piece on the right side seems very peaceful and still in its movement whilst the other one travels out. And interestingly, another comment about the repetition, while there is repetition, the display of these side by side make me try to spot the differences as well. And then we have another comment, in a sense, human bodies are also everyday mass produced. We live with them every day, we maintain them every day. Mm. Um, and continues on, yet we revere the human body, the human person as unique. We lovingly hand make our persona, our ador um, adornments to express the individual within the mass produced humanity. Fantastic comments. Definitely, it, it is if these, these pieces, well, they have been adorned. And exactly right, through the ages, through costume and fashion, people have adorned themselves to create an identity. We're going to reveal the artist and the materials in our next slide. At close to three meter by two meter, the work is slightly bigger than a ping pong table, which is two by 2.7 by 1.5 meters. So this is a very big, the work is, we're talking about each uh, being bigger than a ping pong table. So quite big work. is a work by Anne Summit from Malaysia. This work features world-bound assemblages that are constructed out of various found objects, evoking the abstracted form of a human anatomy. According to Summit, and I quote, I am determined to bring weaving into a contemporary context and surpass its association as a simple domestic activity. I seek to empower women's identity within the domestic environment by deliberately employing traditional weaving techniques and juxtaposing it with these modern day ready-made objects. I explore ideas of the domestic and the handmade versus the industrial. Interestingly, the core of the figures um, is the heart. And um, you can actually look at, try to identify them. I think the easiest way to look at them is that on the right-hand side, below um, the red heart caps, you see uh, a textile sort. And, at that uh, and that's the heart of the, the, the work. And the artists have created using the Songket technique. And um, the Songket is a weaving technique used in the Malay world. And Summit has replaced the use of um, gold and silver thread that is used for Songket with uh, metal fox and a uh, short wooden stick. And creating uh, a chain of this object by interweaving them um, wear-wise with the thread. While and Summit's uh, work is an assemblage. She spent a lot of time trying to explain why weaving is very important in this context. And weaving to her um, is a key part of her identity and her work. And just to get a sense of what weaving is, um, I'd like to share that weaving is the process of interlacing vertical and horizontal threads at right angles to create Textile. But in this context, Summit actually used weaving techniques to pre create this particular work. And um, what you find is that the way the warp and the web, which is the horizontal, um, the, the warp and the web, 
um, create that kind of interlacing of items, create this rich uh, assemblage. Thank you, Chai. I think we're going to um, compare and survey what we've explored in this session with our next slide. So today we've had quite a challenging array of artworks that explore the theme of embodiment, bringing form and visibility to ideas, feelings explored by these artists. So our first work, we explored an expressive drawing of joy of nonverbal expression through the body with the Bruce Nauman piece with body pressure. We looked at performance and conceptual art and the challenging of conventions within the museum. And our third work, Blinded No More, so Immortality We Go, is a celebration of identity taking woven structures to create personal symbolism. We'd be really interested to have you share with us which work today resonated with you most. And we'll pop up a survey. And I think today will be quite difficult to predict. I can imagine that there will be certain pieces that people really did find a personal connection with and hoping that through this experience, you feel perhaps a little bit more present, more connected with your, with your body, and that this will stay with you for the afternoon. We have our poll up at the moment, and... It's quite interesting at one point in time, everybody, uh one of the work has been equal score. Just seeing how that poll's going. I think in this moment I'm I'm leaning towards the body pressure one artwork. Oh my, that would be my vote. <laughs> I'd be curious to actually see how, oh, let's, oh here are the, we can see the results come in and it is really remarkable and interesting results. We have, I hope everyone can see this, but um, about some body pressure have the the same amount of um, people voting. So that's really interesting. And just coming behind that is the Anne Summit piece. So that's really interesting that no today with exploring those ideas around in, embodiment and the physical use of our body um, depicted in art and use in art is um Really fascinating. Thank you for, for voting it because when we put these, when we curate these experiences, it's actually an interesting process and we really don't know how people will respond. And it's your involvement in the program that makes, makes it enlivened and so interesting. So again, we value your input into the program and we'd like to give you the opportunity to share with us through a, um, a poll, um, through words, how this experience has made you feel within this moment. So you're able to scan the QR code on the top left or you can uh, log into slido.com and share with us perhaps your response to the session and how in this moment you may be feeling.
I really like the bodily aware. I can really feel myself seated in this seat and I'm really looking forward to stretching out. Also imaginative is a really wonderful descriptive word. We hope that during this series and in particular today that we've shared with you some strategies for slow looking and observing that you can take with you beyond this program. So I might hand over to my colleagues. Thank you for sharing with us the works that resonated with you the most today and for taking the time to reflect how the session has made you feel. We hope that your body and mind are working as one now. And as an extension of the program, we would like to take the opportunity to invite you to create a response to the artwork or the themes we have explored in this series. For example, a photograph that reflects self-consciousness, a sketch, collage, painting, or a piece of writing that explore the theme of embodiment. Share your responses with us on our social media by using the hashtag crosscultureartgirls at Art Gallery New South Wales, at Black Dog Institute, at the Singapore Art Museum. Many thanks for joining the Cross Culture Outdoor series. We hope you have enjoyed this session and all the previous sessions. We now turn over to Nicole for the final words. Thank you so much, Danelle, Catherine, and Chai Hong for this wonderful experience. I've really enjoyed all three sessions and I hope everyone has found the series relaxing. And I hope we gave you a chance to slow down with art Take the time to reflect, especially as this is Mental Health Month. Thank you everyone for attending and sending in your comments and insights too. I think we've had some really different comments throughout the past three weeks, but it seems that what's in common is that everyone has come out feeling more self-aware and relaxed and inspired, and I'm really glad for that. Special thanks go out to the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute. The Singapore Art Museum is very grateful to Danielle and Catherine for joining us this past three Saturdays. We would love to know your thoughts on the program today. We hope you can take a moment to scan the QR code displayed on screen now to access the feedback form. These responses are very important to our design of the program and we do read it. So I hope that you'll all fill it out this exhibition, The Gift, which is currently on view at the National Gallery Singapore. We have another talk titled The Giant Panda and the Power of Cute on the 21st of October. You can visit Sam's website for more information on that. Once again, thank you to our wonderful speakers and a big thank you to our audience for spending your time with us. See you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>